guys, welcome back and welcome to the latest installment in my Where Are They Now series. I've done a couple of these videos before. We are revisiting favorites videos from two years ago to see what happened to those products. Do I still love them? Do I still have them? Or have I replaced them with something else instead? This, however, is an extra special video because we are revisiting my favorites of the year from 2015. I feel like a lot of these I'm probably still gonna love. Like if they made the best of the best list, I probably still like them, right? But we're gonna find out together. And for those of you who are a little more forward looking, there will be a best of 2017 coming at you soon. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. And let's get started. We're gonna start with a couple of blushes. And the very first thing is a Lorac blush in the shade Soul. I loved that blush so much. I think I used it constantly for a couple of years. I did recently, like earlier this year, declutter it because they don't make that formula anymore and I just wasn't reaching for it as much as I used to. It is a really nice mauve kind of cool toned blush, but not too cold. Very, very neutral where I felt like I could wear it all the time. So no, I don't have that anymore. I don't have any of the newer Lorac blushes. I do have a highlighter that I really like, so I'd be interested in trying that. But sadly, that one is no longer with me. The next blush, however, I do still have, and it is my MAC Mineralized Blush in Dainty. I've got this beauty on my cheeks today. This is a lovely, lovely blush. It is definitely warmer and rosier and more pink. It has more of a sheen to it. I don't reach for this one as much as I used to. It used to be just my go-to, like grab it every day. Now I tend to gravitate towards more kind of peachy neutral blushes. So I typically reach for my Wet n Wild blushes like Apricot in the Middle, Rosé Champagne, or recently I've been getting a lot of use out of Tarte's Party. This was the Sephora birthday kit. This is a neutral one I really like. So yes, I do still reach for this, but not as often the Body Shop Honey Bronzer. I'm feeling like most of the products on this list are gonna be those products I've talked about a million times. I still love this. I'm wearing it today when I want a matte bronzer. This is always, almost always what I go for. I like this because it's perfect for pale skin. If you're ridiculously pale like I am, the Honey Bronzer in 01 is just perfect. It's warm enough that it really works as a bronzer. I don't contour with this. Um, so, so I like that about it, but it's also not super, super orangey. I am shocked at how much of this product is still left. I probably use this three or four times a week, at least sometimes more. And I mean, it's still going strong. So yes, I do still highly recommend. And then for a highlighter, my first real highlight love. 2015 was probably the first year I ever put a highlighter on my face. And like a lot of people, my first highlight love was Mary Luminizer from the balm. I still really enjoy this highlight. I'm wearing this today. I'm wearing the bronzer today. I don't remember if I mentioned that. Um, I definitely don't reach for it as much as I used to because for a long time this was my only highlight. I mean, I wore it every day. I have others that I enjoy now as well. I tend to reach for that Lorac highlighter I mentioned or the Essence Pure Nude highlighter more, but when I use this, I do like it. It's just on the verge the verge of being too deep for my skin tone, which I know is crazy. I know that means I've reached like new levels of pale. I feel like every single year I get more pale because, you know, I haven't had a tan in like a decade. So yes, it's it's quite special. But yes, this is, is absolutely beautiful. I mentioned a concealer in that video. My MAC Pro Longwear Concealer still love that guy. That was still a long time fave. I've got an empty one here. I think I've been through six of these something like that. Um, this is just a really good stable concealer for me. You get a ton of product in here, so it's a really good deal. I would take this over Tarte Shape Tape or Urban Decay Naked Concealer any day. I haven't repurchased it because I've been trying a lot of drugstore concealers recently. I've got a drugstore concealer, cheap or cheaper, coming at you in the near future, but that is a really nice one. I would repurchase it again. Okay, I skipped something. I'm going out of order, I'm sorry. Not that it matters. This is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Palette. I still have this beauty. I was looking at the, the 2015 video that I had made and it looked barely touched, barely touched. I mean, I'd had it for six months or something, but now there's much more damage done to this baby. This is an extremely expensive palette. One of the most expensive things I've ever paid full price for, for myself. It was kind of a special occasion splurge, and um, I still really like it. So the way I can use this is I take the two lighter shades and mix them together as 
kind of a finishing powder and then I use the deeper shade as a bronzer. I'm not reaching for this much anymore. I need to kind of pull it towards the front of the drawer so that I make a better use out of it because this summer I discovered my beloved Wet n Wild ticket to Brazil as a shimmery bronzer type product. And this is a really, really, really good dupe for dim light. I mean, honestly, they do the same thing on my face. They just give that really nice, subtle bronzy glow. So if you're interested in that for the bronzery shade, save yourself 60 bucks and just and just pick up this one. Um, but I am happy I bought that for myself because it has gotten a lot of use. The Wet n Wild Ultimate Brow Kit. This is obviously a very well used product. I used this, this for a couple of years. I do still pick it up, but only on rare occasions. I even forgot to use it today because I just don't do the powder thing anymore. I don't know, I find brow pencils to be faster and easier. Um, and I would rather use a pencil and then a brow gel. So yeah, I, if you're looking for something like that, I still really do recommend it. I think it's nice quality. I like the tones of the two powder powders. They are not too warm or red toned. And because they're two shades, you can kind of customize the perfect shade for you, but it is not one that I am still reaching for. A couple of single shadows in this, and the first is the Wet n Wild eyeshadow in Brulee. I still love that. I don't have one at the moment. A few of you guys noticed that I didn't mention it in my big Wet n Wild review video, and it's because I just kind of forgot about it because I didn't have it with me. Um, I, I've gone through a lot of those. I have repurchased that several times, but the last one, Tut, got his little paws on and destroyed and you know rolled around on the floor and threw it under the door in, in pieces. So I need to pick up a new one. I love that because it's very close to my skin tone and so I use it to set my eyeshadow primer before I go in with another, with like a palette or, or another shadow of some type. Really, really helps eyeshadow blend more easily. I highly recommend checking it out if you're looking for something like that. And then the other shadow is still a favorite as well. It is my Bobbi Brown Single Eyeshadow in Camel. I feel like when I got this, I didn't have any shades in my collection that were similar to this. That kind of medium toned brown that had that mustardy undertone to it. It's the type of color that you don't think would look good on the eye, but looks absolutely beautiful. Um, so it was really special in my collection. I feel like now more brands have started incorporating shades like that in their palette, so I don't find myself reaching for it as much as I once did, but if I'm doing just one shadow and just like kind of doing something messy and calling it a day, I do reach for this one a lot. This is another product I've used countless times that looks like I've barely touched it, so it is super expensive, but you are gonna get a lot for your money. Wet n Wild Eyeshadows, Silent Treatment and Petal Pusher. If you watched that big brand review I did recently, you'll know that these are the two palettes that made it into the best of the best. I love these. I love Wet n Wild Eyeshadows in general, and I think these palettes in particular are beautiful. I love this taupey shade here all over the lid. It is absolutely stunning. It has so much dimension to it. It is really easy to wear. I like the petal pusher because it has so many mattes. Again, I've just talked about this, these a bunch. I do still really love these, but you guys probably know Wet n Wild's coming out with their new formula. And in their new formula, they don't have the same shades. Like I don't think there's a petal pusher in the new formula. So I feel like I'm going to painfully have to start decluttering some of my Wet n Wild shadows when I'm able to get my hands on the new ones because, you know, I wanna show you guys the new stuff but these two I will be keeping. You will have to pry these out of my cold, dead hands. And then two high-end palettes from 2015 as well. These are still two of my favorite palettes of all time. I believe these were both in my favorites of 2016 as well, my yearly favorites that year, but I haven't checked. I'm pretty sure they're both in there though. And the first, of course, is my beloved Lorac Unzipped Palette. 2015 will forever be a special year because it is the year we met. The year that we entered into this beautiful relationship that we have. I love this palette, wearing it on my eyes today. If you don't have this palette, you're pretty much not living your best life and you should, you should fix that immediately. 
And then the other one is my Lorac Pro 2 palette. I've got all three Pro palettes and this is by far the standout for me. I just feel like it has the most variety. It's the most interesting. I love all these shades here like uh, rosé and nectar and beige and snow. Those really speak to me. I do not reach for navy. I've worn that shade like three times. It's really hard to blend. I don't like it. I like the deeper um, shimmery shades as well, but yes, this is just a perfect palette. Speaking of Lorac, I also mentioned the Lorac Front of the Line Pro Liquid Eyeliner. Now this was a game changer for me because I went from being awful at winged liner to kind of halfway looking like I have my shit together. I mean, it just made applying the wing so much easier for me. I am very happy to say, however, that I don't use that anymore because I repurchased that many, many times until I found two much more affordable options. The Physicians Formula 2-in-1 Eye Booster Liner plus Serum and the Jessie's Girl Liquid Liner. Both of these are the same thing as the Lorac Pro Liner. I mean, it's the same format, it's the same packaging, it's the same brush tip, it's pretty much the same product that comes out. So save the money and start buying these instead because they are just as good and half the price. Benefit Roller Lash, still my favorite. Love this one, not wearing it today because I am testing out a new mascara. I should have a video coming for you guys soon on that, but this is what I go for if I want to splurge and if I want my lashes to look beautiful. It opens the eyes, it gives you that kind of fanned out effect, doesn't get clumpy, makes my lashes long, curled, beautiful. It's just everything in a mascara tube. And on to some brushes. First, the IT Cosmetics for Ulta Blending Crease Brush. I believe this is number 109. This is a beautiful, beautiful brush. I've had this for years now and it's very sturdy, it's very solid, the bristles are very soft. I don't think this has shed on me ever. I mean, these brushes are expensive, but they are beautifully made. Um, I don't use this one as much as I used to anymore because now I tend to reach for a more diffused crease brush, something that's a little bit more blendy than this. This is better for really getting into the crease. If you want like more of a crease color, but you don't want it to be completely diffused on the edges. When I want that more diffused effect, I use my, where are you? Here you are. Uh, Morphe M441. This is a really shitty brush compared to this. This one is soft, well-made, beautiful. This one sheds sometimes. It's scratchy. It doesn't feel good, but there's something about this that just works for me. I don't know. I hate it. I don't really like Morphe. It just, it really bugs me, but I get the result that I want, so I use this one more. The e.l.f. Complexion Brush. I mentioned in that video that I use this for everything, powder, bronzer, blush, and that is still true. I actually have two of these. I keep one for my face powder and then one for my color products, just so that it doesn't get, you know, messy. Um, and I use at least one of these every single day. A very good use of $3. And then one more e.l.f. brush, the e.l.f. Small Stipple Brush. I believe I mentioned this because I really liked it with that highlighter, Mary Lou, and I used it today and it works really well. It just diffuses the product nicely so you don't get any harsh lines. I usually use it that way. I will occasionally use it for cream products. I just don't reach for it as much anymore. This is actually a really good brush. It remains like really solid. It's never shed. What I tend to use for highlighter more these days is my Real Techniques setting brush and just kind of, you know, tap that on. But, but both of these are good. I think I just got out of the habit of using this, but it is really nice. And then the last brushes on here are from Real Techniques. I talked about the core collection and the starter set. I always forget which one is which. One of them is for uh, face brushes and one of them is for eye brushes. The face brushes, do I have them all here? Yes, I have the, um, contour brush. They recently changed the sets. Like they have a new version of them out, but I think this is the same. This is my favorite brush of the whole set because I like to use it to blend out my concealer under my eyes or set it with powder. Recently I've been using something else to blend out my concealer so that I can use this for powder because it's just perfect for that. I also like the, wait, that's the wrong one. Yes, the foundation brush. Um, again, don't reach for this one as much, but the contour brush I do use every single day. The other one, whichever one that one is, has the eye brushes. The brush that I get the most use out of is the Deluxe Crease Brush, except I use this for concealer. It works really well all over the face or I use it for my color corrector under my eyes. 
because it's just nice and dense, but just, you know, you can just like kind of like tap it out. I mean, I obviously am not left-handed. Um, you just kind of tap the product out nicely and it doesn't take too much of the coverage away. You know, like it doesn't absorb a lot of the product, but still blends it nicely. So I use that one a lot. The other brush from that kit that was my favorite is the Base Shadow Brush. I loved this brush for the longest time and then I lost it for like a year, a year. I, I didn't have this and I could not figure out what happened to it. Um, Tut happened to it. He got this brush and he actually stuck it through the holes in the vent on the floor and it was down in the air vent just hanging out for like a year. And one day when Keith was, I don't know, cleaning something out, um, he found it. So, you know, I washed it up, but I just, I got out of the habit of using it so I don't use it as much anymore. Two things left, we're almost at the end. The first is cornstarch. Cornstarch is my all-time favorite dry shampoo. I have never found a dry shampoo that works on my hair as well as cornstarch does. I know that's weird, but it's also super cheap. The thing about dry shampoo for me is that it usually makes my hair dirtier. Like it might give it a little bit of texture, but it actually makes it dirtier feeling. Cornstarch actually just absorbs the oil so it feels and looks less greasy on me. Um, I don't use dry shampoo or cornstarch very much anymore, just in general. So I haven't used it as much recently, but if I want dry shampoo, that is still what I reach for. And then finally, one skincare product, Hydroluron from Indeed Labs. 2015 was a big year. 2015 was the year I discovered my love for hyaluronic acid. I still love hyaluronic acid. It is my favorite thing I ever put on my face. Love Hydroluron, do still use that one. Um, I've recently finished a tube and I'm trying to get through one that I have been trying from The Ordinary. I think I like Hydroluron better, but The Ordinary is more affordable and I think it works. So I haven't decided which I will repurchase, but still highly recommend. So that was a lot. I feel like I'm, I'm tired. I feel like I need a nap to recover from that. I'm losing my voice. Hopefully this video I was able to like edit it down and it wasn't 5 million hours long, but thanks for sticking with me through the whole thing. Let me know if you have any products from a couple of years ago that are still just your all time favorites. I would love to hear about those down below and I will see you guys here soon. Bye. The next blush, however, I do still have and it is my MAC Mineralized Dash. My boys, I'm gonna go have some lunch and hang out. It's a, it's a Saturday. I'm filming this on Saturday and I usually don't, that, nobody cares. Nobody cares when you film Robin, nobody cares. I have to say, I'm that person that has not bought Elf's new brushes. You know the brushes they have now that are like six bucks? I mean, everybody says they're good, everybody says they're a good deal. They are twice as much, why? Why do they have to make brushes that are twice as expensive? I remember the days when everything else sold was a dollar and I feel like anything from Elf that's more than a dollar is just absurd. I am absurd, I apologize. <laughs>